Well, good evening, everyone. This has uh, been an exciting uh, slideshow that we've been privy to. I have uh, had the great pleasure of being at the school for a long enough period of time. I've met alumni from the 20s up until the present. And while I couldn't pick out everyone in there, it's fun seeing uh, uh, the story of the school being told. My name is Cleve Gilmore. I have the honor of being the Dean of the Jack, Joseph, and Morton Men's Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences. And I'm very happy to welcome you tonight uh, and thank you for joining us for the Mandel School's 2020 Homecoming and Reunion Celebration. It's the first homecoming and reunion event that's been held virtually in the 105 year history of our school. Now, we didn't conceive of this even five years ago being virtual, and I'm sure they didn't think of it 100 years ago. So you're all part of history. Such an event doesn't happen without a great team. And I want to thank Anne-Marie Collender and Nada Franco and our whole team for the outstanding work that they've done in making this event happen. When it's the first time, it really is a notable achievement because no one has left any notes about how to do it. But I'm sure this team is leaving notes for the future. 2020 is presenting vast challenges to all of us, and especially to our most vulnerable populations. We are here to celebrate all of you in our Mandel School community who've made helping those in need your life's work. We're also here to recognize and applaud this year's Alumni Award winners. We are grateful that you've chosen the Mandel School as your career partner and for your support in advancing leadership in education, scholarship, and service to build a more just world. For this, we celebrate you all. Now, I would like to introduce one of our very special guests this evening, the Provost of Case Western Reserve University, Ben Vinson. Ben? Thank you so much, Dean Gilmore. Uh, good evening, everyone, for this historic event. Uh, it is wonderful to be here with you today on what is a splendid day here in Cleveland. Uh, the sun is out, uh, the birds are chirping, it's almost summer, it's, it's a fitting, uh, fitting tribute uh, to, to our Dean. Uh, I wish I were here to, uh, to greet each and every one of you in person, um, uh, but tonight really uh, I am here to recognize one of our most dedicated leaders at the university uh, as he prepares for his retirement. The Mandel School's own Dean Cleve Gilmore. I've been thinking a lot about what to say about Cleve. Um, he is a man who has been a dean uh, for more than 20 years. I mean, that, that, I mean that, that's staggering. I mean, 20 years. Let's all pause on that for one moment. Two decades of leadership in higher education. I mean, that, that, is, that is a feat. And he has accomplished so much in that time. During his time as Dean of the Mandel School, uh, the school has opened six research and training centers. It has established the first accredited online graduate de degree program at Case Western Reserve University. One tidbit about this uh, as well, uh, whatever you may know about uh, some of these online uh, content providers, uh, they are uh, very demanding in, in how they deal with the university and almost inflexible. Dean Gilmore uh, was able to get things out of this organization that I don't think anyone else has. So I, I'll just leave it at that because we can't, we, we, we're not allowed to disclose in detail, but it gives you a, 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 someone who's been in the saddle and who's seen everything under the sun, only someone like that could get the kind of uh, contract that we got. So I salute uh, Dean Gilmore for that. In fact, this is the first online master's program in social work in the nation, I believe, uh, uh, Cleve. Uh, he uh, has also uh, taken the school through a full building renovation and provided the school with the most technologically advanced classrooms on campus. You might think it's a school of engineering. You might think it's a school of medicine. No, the state-of-the-art classrooms are in the Mandel School. And as of this fall, he has launched a major new curriculum. All of you who are faculty or who worked with faculty, I think you, you know the, the, the type of political uh, uh, ma maneuverings that it takes 
to do a major revamp of a curriculum. Uh, and to do that with smiling faces, it's incredible, it, absolutely incredible. These feats are made all the more possible by Dean Gilmore's leadership in successfully completing a capital campaign that has raised $44 million for the, for the Mendel School. Now, another piece of, uh, important piece of what makes uh, the Dean's momentous achievements possible, I'm just gonna level with you. It is the compassion and advocacy that he displays for his students. Since taking the reins of the Mandel School, uh, Dean Gilmore has secured 38 new endowed professorships. He has boosted the international affairs program, uh, resulting in 12% of international students in the Mandel School's student body. And he initiated the first short-term study abroad program at Case Western Reserve. These are incredible, incredible feats. Now, additionally, Dean Gilmore has dedicated many hours to teaching and mentoring students, resulting in his recognition with the John S. Dykoff Award for Excellence in Graduate Teaching. But perhaps more than any, all of that, none of that co compares to such a nice person that he is. There's a certain warmth about Dean Gilmore that draws people in invites you to get him to know him better on a personal level. He is the hook and bait, if you will, for a development office because he's so charming. Um, and I think it's what's made him so successful. His ease with people, he's comfortable. And I think it's this trait that, that's been passed on to legions of social workers who have graduated from our prestigious school. In June of next year, Dean Gilmore will, trans will transition out of leading the Mandel School and begin his retirement. But in, in anticipation of this, the, the university has begun a nationwide search to identify a new dean for the school. But as I said earlier in a meeting today, we're never gonna be able to replace Dean Gilmore. He's brought too much, too much passion, too much, too much commitment, uh, too much accomplishment. It is with this appreciation and with great respect that I raise my glass tonight to Dean Cleve Gilmore. Cleve, we wish you well as you begin your next journey. For any of you who may have a, a glass of some sort, be that what it may, I would invite you to join me in this toast to all of the successes of our Dean. Cheers. And now a brief video tribute in honor of Dean Gilmore. Thank you.
Wow. Uh, it's hard for me to talk after the wonderful words that Ben has shared. I think you can see I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little flushed, um, but th thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Provost Vincent. And it was fun seeing the pictures that, that were shared. Um, I've had an opportunity to travel the world for the Mandel School. And but I, I wanna go back to some of the accolades that the Provost shared. Um, it's been my great honor to be the Dean of this school but every single thing that he said that's been accomplished has been because of the great faculty, staff, students, and alumni of this school. It's not about me. It's about my opportunity to be with these wonderful people and to live out the vision they have for creating a better world. So thank you all so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I was starting to tear up a little bit as going through here, but I, I think I'm going to be able to get through it, get, get through this uh, ceremony tonight because this is about our alumni and particularly our award winners. So, once again, thank you. On with the program. I want to express my deep admiration for Mandel School's faculty, staff, and students for their resilience, flexibility, and adaptability this year as we face the challenges of COVID. The health and safety of our school community and our families is always our top priority. And I'm delighted to share that despite the many hurdles the school has faced, particularly in the last eight months, we're off to a great start in our school year. We are teaching all of our classes, except for one or two, remotely. Uh, we reached this decision this summer by testing alternate methods for teaching. So we are an evidence-based school and we went in and we tested different ways of, of teaching. As the provost mentioned, we have the most advanced classrooms on campus. We, can, we have advanced Zoom in our rooms, but we discovered that the small group teaching that our faculty love to do and are very effective at doing can be done best in these Zoom rooms. When we did it inside the classrooms with people sitting six to nine feet apart and wearing masks, it didn't work. It was a cacophony. And you can't do very good role playing when you're looking at the face of somebody wearing a mask. You can't tell what they're expressing. So we went remote. And our students are giving us very positive feedback on their experience in this remote teaching environment. But the faculty really had to work hard in order to be ready to do this. And they stepped up and met that challenge. So my deep gratitude to our faculty and to our resilient students. We meet regularly with our students in town halls. We've been doing this since early in the summer to listen to what they have on their minds, what their issues are. And we do, we're doing this regularly throughout the semester so we can be in touch with them and make sure that we're responding. You may have heard that Enrollment across the United States has been a challenge for many schools and colleges. Uh, we anticipated that here at the Mandel School. We set our budget appropriately, and indeed we have seen a decline in enrollment that we can tie to uh, the challenges of COVID. Uh, but because we were ready with our budget, uh, we were able to finish last fiscal year with a surplus, and we're coming in on budget with our, our year so far now. Uh, so we're, we're in good shape. Uh, but I want to comment that our faculty and staff have made sacrifices, including financial sacrifices, in order to make this work for us. And I'm very grateful for everything that they're doing. Uh, we've received a lot of uh, questions from our alumni about field. How, how are we doing in field education? Well, in, in the springtime, when the when the coronavirus hit and agencies were starting to shut down and reducing services and we had to pull our students out of field, we had great leadership in the school led by uh, Amy Korsh Williams, who was our director of field education at the time. And she working with the other field advisors and members of the faculty were able to come up with alternative ways that students could still gain 
field education by working with field agencies, uh, some cases remotely, uh, doing telehealth, but they could still get valuable experience. And in fact, Amy joined a national panel that sets standards for social work education going forward and that are being followed this year. Uh, these are standards adopted by Council of Social Work Education, another mark of the leadership of the Mandel School. So this year we're prepared. Our, all of our students are placed. Um, some agencies are having more difficulty among the, than others, but we have adapted to it and they're still getting a very strong education. Um, the provost mentioned that we have a new curriculum. I'm very proud of the work that our faculty have done in, in creating this curriculum. It's once again, it's based on evidence. We have been evaluating the outcomes of our students in, in our classes, evaluating the extent to which they were meeting our competencies that we have set for them. Uh, we looked at what we were doing well, areas that we had challenges, and we built a generalist curriculum, a foundation curriculum that uh, we believe will yield even stronger alumni than we've had in the past, better prepared for their specialized education that they're receiving and better prepared to enter social work. It's a highly integrated curriculum. It's been so well conceived. Uh, I believe it's setting a new standard for social work education that as we present on this uh, at our national meetings and we write about it, it will become the standard for social work education. Finally, I wanna talk with you about our students, the people who choose to come here. We have wonderful students. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking to former students, our alumni. You all agree that you're all wonderful. Well, we're, con we're continuing that tradition. Our students are passionate, they're dedicated, they bring great talents. No one makes a decision to enter a career in social work or nonprofit leadership because they're thinking about the great, their great earning potentials and what they're going to earn. You make a decision based on what's in your heart. And these are the people that are still coming here. However, this is a difficult time. Many of our students who in the past have supported themselves with part-time jobs lost their jobs because of this pandemic. Places that employed them, such as uh, restaurants, uh, they've closed. So there's even more financial need. Many of you responded earlier this summer and in the springtime when we had a call for emergency aid for our students. We gave them additional support in order to help them get along. But now when I learn of students who want to come here and yet who can't because of the burdens of the high tuition that you have at a private university, uh, I, I literally find that painful. Uh, the provost referred to the, the 38 endowed scholarships that we have created in the time that, that I've been here. Uh, I'm very proud that we have these endowed scholarships and that we're creating more support for our students. We want to make it possible for everybody who desires to have the highest education, uh, highest quality education that we are able to provide to be part of the Mandel School. We give tuition support to 100% of our students. 100% receive tuition support. But even with that, as of last year, the average debt carried by our students at time of graduation is, hold your hats, $77,000. Wow. When a starting salary of a social worker is only around $44,000, $45,000. A, a goal that I have set is to reduce the debt of students tremendously so that it, it's no more than what they make in their first year. And in fact, we've actually set a goal of covering 75% of the tuition of the average student. To give them $35,000 a year in support. Today, we give them about 17,000. So we're trying to double that amount. And we have a campaign challenge uh, to do that. We have a committee that's been working very hard in order to raise these funds. Now, I think I'm preaching to the choir. You know what the quality education is. 
And I know that you're donors, and I'm really grateful for, for what you have done for us. Um, but you're going to be hearing more, more from us because the need, the need is uh, greater than ever. We don't have the federal training grants that many of you were supported on in the past. Uh, we have a couple that we've been able to obtain, but now it's like hen's teeth. They're very, very rare in social work education. It's not like it was in the, in the 60s and, and 70s. So we, we have to make it up with the private donations that we can make, uh, we can get from our, our wonderful uh, alumni and friends. And we're very fortunate to have such great friends. Shal the scholarship campaign is concluding on December 31st. Every gift is valued and appreciated. And we hope um, to have your continued support in what we're doing uh, because it's about access. It's about making our great school available to everyone who wants to be here and to leave here so that they can be the most powerful and successful change agent in people's lives as they can be. So thank you. So now we're going to move on to the award ceremony. Great. Last year at our homecoming event, I spoke of the passing of Steve Minter and how much he's meant to our school and our community. I'm pleased that tonight I can announce that our first honoree is Steve Minter, class of 1963. Steve has a special place in the hearts of the Mandel School community. He served for many years on our visiting committee and was active on our current scholarship campaign committee at the time of his death. Steve was an inspiration and a positive force for change within the Mandel School and within our broader community. Among many other accolades, Steve was a Case Western Reserve University trailblazer, the former CEO of the Cleveland Foundation. And we've learned that he's being honored posthumously at the end of this month with a Cleveland Arts Prize, the Robert P. Bergman Prize for demonstrating a democratic vision of art. Furthermore, the National Association of Social Workers Foundation Pioneer Program has identified him as an individual whose unique dedication, commitment, and determination have improved social and human conditions. Consequently, he is being honored with one of the highest honors given in social work. He is a social work pioneer. This year, we're very pleased that he's receiving that. And I'd like to introduce his daughter, Robin Minter Smyers, to sh share a few words with us tonight. Robin? Good evening. Thank you, Dean Gilmore. Together with my sisters, Caroline and Michelle, I thank you for posthumously recognizing our dad, Steve Minter, tonight. I appreciate greatly the efforts of Darlene Bailey, Sharon Milligan, Claudia Colton, Richard Jones, Goldie Alves, and Robin Sandys, who nominated Dad for the National Association of Social Workers Foundation's Pioneer Award. No one would have enjoyed this evening more than Steve Minter. He would have resisted the attention and wanted to give credit to others, but he would have loved being here with the CWRU family. That's the way he thought about you. The unexpected loss of dad last year has been hard, but there has been something deeply comforting about knowing that when we are on CWRU's campus, we will be able to visit his trailblazer portrait and find his spirit. For all of his 80 years of life, my dad was a busy man. If you asked him why he was so active, he would often say, well, they asked me to help. Through his very last hours, he wanted to be of service. You see, he had the heart of a social worker, a heart that was nurtured at the Mandel School. He always attributed many of the opportunities he had in life to the doors that were opened at CWRU. I know he hoped the scholarship he funded at the Mandel School would open doors for other students of promise. One of dad's favorite quotations was from 
Ralph Waldo Emerson. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Steve Minter would be proud to feel that he made a small difference and he was grateful to the Mandel School for helping to make it possible. Thank you for this kind recognition of dad and the opportunity to participate in this special homecoming tonight. Well, thank you so much, Robin. It's, Steve has meant so much to the school and, and to me, and uh, I'm glad that you were able to join us tonight and, and, and share your, your wonderful words. We'll always remember Steve. And now we're going to move on to announce our Hall of Achievement awardees. Our first inductee is Sharon J. Brown, who received her MNO in 2000. Sharon is receiving uh, this weekend the CWRU African American Alumni Association President's Award. Uh, I've known Sharon for much of my career at CWRU, and I know how deserving she is of this recognition. Uh, unfortunately, Sharon has not been, is not able to join us this evening, uh, but I ask you to raise a toast for her and congratulate her on what she has accomplished in her career, uh, a career that has benefited greatly the CWRU community. Congratulations, Sharon. And now, allow me to introduce Norma C. Geller. Norma is a 1991 graduate of the Mandel School. Norma is the recipient of the CWRU Newton D. Baker Distinguished Service Award. Norma is with us this evening and she has pre-recorded a message that I would like to share with you now. Cue the video. I'm truly humbled and greatly honored to have been chosen by the Alumni Association of Case Western Reserve University to be this year's recipient of the Newton D. Baker Distinguished Service Award. And I would like to thank the powers to be who selected me. As I reflect upon my three years from 1988 through 1991, when I attended what was then known as the Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences, or MSAS as we knew it, I am so grateful to this day for the education that I received there. Even though I was an older student and had many years of life experiences behind me, what I learned at SAS reinforced and propelled me in the direction that I was thought was so meaningful over the years. My late husband, Albert, had a mantra, you only go through life once, so make a difference. And we tried to follow that, and I'm still trying in my older years. When I see a need, I act. And my field placement at SAS on the oncology floor of Mount Sinai Hospital was the impetus for my becoming an oncology social worker. I realized many needs that cancer patients undergoing treatment had while I was working in radiation therapy after graduation. Never did I imagine that at the end of 1991, I myself would be diagnosed with late stage ovarian cancer. My remission over nearly 30 years instilled in me the desire to help with ovarian cancer research at Case Western Reserve's medical school, as well as transportation funds at Cleveland's hospitals for those in need of getting to treatment. The help to build a new students, Hillo Student Center on Case's campus was a joint decision by Al and me, as we were so proud to give back to the schools that gave so much to us. 
Al was a graduate of Cleveland College that the late Mayor Baker was a great proponent of. I will end my re remarks with a brief note that I hope will make you smile. It is about my 1991 Buick Riviera that I'm driving to this day. After we negotiated the price at the Buick dealer, I pulled out my student ID from Case and the salesman said to me, you're a student? And I replied, here's the proof. And therefore I was entitled to a discount. That discount gave me a little extra to give to those in need. Thank you once again to the Alumni Association for this most distinguished honor. I will keep it close to my heart forever. Wow. Uh, thank you, Norma. Very, very touching remarks. Um, thank you. And I, I didn't know of your history as a cancer survivor. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, our alumni are, are amazing. Thank you for everything you're doing. By the way, those of you who haven't turned on chat, you can, you can look in chat. I'm seeing some really uh, nice comments that, that people are making about things that they're hearing, uh, in, including, a one, including a request that we post the information on how to give. You know, where's the link for giving? I think we can do that. Yeah, you, we'll be in touch, don't worry. So now I wanna move on to introduce Dr. Adrian Hatton. Dr. Hatton is a graduate in 1996 with a master's in nonprofit organizations. And she's also our alumni board president. And she's going to present this year's Alumni Association Awards. Adrienne? Good evening and congratulations to our reuniting alumni and honorees. On behalf of the Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences, Alumni Association, I am pleased to present this year's Alumni Awards. Please note that the details you're seeing here about each of our Alumni Award winners is also available on the school's website for your further reading pleasure. The Alumni Association is proud to give the Early Career Success Award this year to an outstanding recent graduate. Brianna Hollis, MSSA 2014, currently works full-time for Crisis Text Line as a crisis counselor coach. During her time there, she has supported over 2,000 people in crisis and trained hundreds of volunteer crisis counselors. She also runs her own business, Learning to Be Free, LLC, a blog aimed at providing educational mental health information with a focus on self-care. Brianna has continued her education, receiving a Master of Education degree with a concentration in higher education administration from Tiffin University in 2019, and has been certified as a youth mentor coach and youth leadership coach. She is now inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, Brianna. Brianna, please hold up your award and say a few words. Here's my award. Um, good evening. Thank you all for being here and for supporting all of us in our social work journeys. My journey in social work started when I was an undergrad and taking a class entitled Social Work and Environmental Justice. I took the class because I thought it would count towards my criminal justice degree. I sadly found out later that it didn't. But in that class, I met a social work professor that changed the course of my life. She was compassionate, steadfast in her beliefs, and always ready to speak her mind. At that point in my life, I never intended to go into social work as a profession, but I am so glad that I did. With her constant support and belief that I would make a wonderful social worker, I applied to MSAS. Since starting my career in social work, I have been able to support thousands of people, and I've been able to inspire others to do the same. In 2018, I started learning to be free, a blog that was at first, a way to recount my life and express myself creatively. It eventually grew into a business where I'm able to share mental health knowledge that I've gained. My time at NSAS was, integral, was an integral part of being able to start this business, not only because of the knowledge that was shared with me in my time there, but because of the social work values instilled in me. I will continue to model these values no matter where my career takes me next. 
Thank you again all for being here and thank you to MSAS for the education experience and the memories. Thank you, Brianna. The Alumni Association is proud to present the Lewis Stokes Community Service Leadership Award to Lewis Darnell Francois, MSSA 2007. Lewis has been in the field of social services for 25 years and currently works for Bowery Residence Committee, a nonprofit organization serving the homeless in New York City. Lewis is an openly gay HIV positive writer, health professional, HIV AIDS activist, blogger, community builder, social worker, and mentor to youth of color of all sexual orientations and genders. He has worked tirelessly empowering people of color, those affected and infected with the HIV AIDS virus, ex-offenders, commercial sex workers, the homeless, and other minorities through mentoring, advocacy, social services, and public speaking. Lewis is now also inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, Lewis. Lewis, please hold up your award and say a few words. Right here, uh, thank you very much. Um, as stated, I work at a homeless shelter and during the uh, COVID pandemic, I've been working every day at the office, facilitating groups and also continuing to seek funding for housing. Um, Mandel is recognized in New York City. It opens doors. I have always been told what a great school it is and I've been trained by the best, which allows me to do what I do to the best of my abilities here in New York. So thank you for the recognition. I have no idea who uh, nominated me and it's always a pleasure to reconnect with my alumni, fellow students. Thank you, Lewis. The Alumni Association is proud to present the Nonprofit Leadership Award to Lee Fisher, MNO 2005. Lee Fisher is the Dean and Joseph C. Hostetler Baker and Hostetler Chair in Law at Cleveland Marshall College of Law at Cleveland State University. His diverse career has spanned the private, public, nonprofit, and academic sectors. Lee was elected Ohio Attorney General in 1990. As general counsel for the state of Ohio, he managed the largest firm in Ohio and was the first attorney general to personally argue cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit and the Ohio Supreme Court. In addition, he has served as Ohio Lieutenant Governor, State Senator, and State Representative. Lee is now also inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, Lee. Lee, will you please hold up your award and say a few words? I will. Uh, Dr. Hatton, thank you very, very much. Uh, I want to begin by paying tribute to Cleve Gilmore for his 20 years of outstanding leadership. Uh, I've been a dean only for four years, and he's my model. I doubt I'll make it to 20, but I don't think there's anyone in this community who is more well-respected, admired, and well-liked than Cleve. So congratulations to you, Cleve. And congratulations to uh, my fellow awardees, all of whom I either know or know of, and I respect and admire you as well. When I think of the Mandel School, I think of Mort Mandel, who I considered a friend. People like Congressman Lewis Stokes, uh, one of the people who was perhaps my heroes, Steve Minter, who was not just a friend and a mentor, but truly a hero and so happy that he got the Pioneer Award tonight. Art Napperstack, Darlene Bailey, John Yankee, Sharon Milligan, Claudia Colton. There's so many iconic people associated with this school. Uh, and I've just been so proud. 29 years after I received my law degree at Case Western Reserve University, I realized I still had a lot more to learn. I had just become the CEO of the Center for Families and Children, and despite the fact that I thought I knew what I was doing, I decided I better check. And so I applied to the MNO program and learned so much, and I continue to learn so much now as I lead a law school. I think that there's never been a time in our lives that's been more important to be on the front lines, uh, to be change agents, 
My daughter is a social worker. My wife's the president of the Diversity Center of Northeast Ohio. We've committed our lives to making change. And when I think of the quote that Robin Minter Smyers gave us tonight from Emerson, useful, honorable, compassionate, my final words to you tonight are this, that in just a few weeks, we all need to be on the front lines again and vote if you haven't already, because at this moment, the soul of America is on the ballot. And I think we need to stand up for the values that we have been taught by so many pioneers like Cleve and Steve Minter and exercise our vote and again, be on the front lines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. The Alumni Association is proud to present the Professional Achievement Award to Elizabeth Warmington Garcia, MSSA, MNO 2000. Elizabeth has dedicated her career to serving children and families. As Director of Behavioral Health Services at the Children's Guild Alliance, she expanded school-based mental health services from two counties to six counties and 20 schools to 90 schools, while also introducing an electronic health record, trauma-informed care, and financial sustainability. Recently promoted to Chief Clinical Officer, Elizabeth works with the clinical leadership throughout the organization to implement consistent program models and best practice interventions that ensure the continued success of treatment outcomes for children and families. Elizabeth is now also inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, please hold up your award and say a few words. Well, I don't have an award because I happen to be in Maine when the award arrived in Baltimore. So, um, but I do have it. Um, and um, I would like to thank the Mandel Alumni Association for the award and for um, the recognition. Social work has never been a career for me. It is my purpose in life. My core belief that all people deserve to be treated with respect and dignity runs through my bones and my passion for making it happen runs through my blood. The three years that I spent learning from faculty and fellow students at MSAS and Weatherhead were invaluable. They solidified my purpose and gave me the knowledge to charge ahead. The accomplishments that you mentioned are not mine to own. I share them with an army of people in my personal and professional worlds that stood by me and supported me during the trials and tribulations of my life and career. Several people are here tonight. My husband and fellow MNO classmate, Michael Garcia, I would not be where I am today without your unwavering support and your belief in my potential. Thank you to my mom and dad for never letting me think I could not do something and for doing whatever it took to get me there. Thank you to my mentor, Sheila Reynolds from Belfair. You showed me how to keep my eyes on the prize and get to step in. You taught me the value of laughter as medicine and you demonstrated for me that when managing people, clear is kind way before Brene Brown published her book. Thank you to Dr. Ross, the CEO of the Children's Guild. You trusted me to build a program and challenged me to always think outside of the box. Thank you to Jenny and the clinical supervisors for being part of an irreplaceable team and never hesitating to disagree with me or provide feedback. And last of all, thank you to Jamie and Jillian for going behind my back and nominating me for this award. They knew I would never have allowed it otherwise. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. The Alumni Association is proud to present the next Professional Achievement Award, award to Dante Latson, MSSA 1998. Dante is the Chief Executive Officer of Denver-based Rocky Mountain Communities. He has more than 20 years of experience in nonprofits and 15 years of experience as an executive leader. As CEO, Dante provides organizational strategy, including creating a visionary roadmap for engaging community stakeholders through relationship building and collective impact. Prior to joining Rocky Mountain Communities, he served as the president and CEO of the YWCA McLean County in Illinois for six years. He also served as a director for various healthcare institutions. 
Dante is now also inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, Dante. Okay, can, can you all hear me? I think I was muted. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, but thank you all very much. Uh, I am honored. I first want to thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Gilmore and uh, the other inductees, uh, as well as the selection committee. Uh, when I came to MSAS in 97, um, it was an advanced standing program and an absolute introvert. It was a um, my undergrad professor at Morgan State University in Baltimore who saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and that was an ability to lead. Um, so it was at Case um, and at MSAS where I was able to develop that confidence and enough to go into executive leadership in my 20s. So um, I am forever grateful and uh, the professor, professor that really urged me to come to MSAS, uh, she felt strongly about that because of a former professor who was one of her students uh, from the past, and that's Dr. David Miller. Uh, so I, I think of Dr. Miller, uh, Dr. Uh, um, or Dean uh, Darlene Bailey, and just a host of other great people. So once again, just want to thank you all for uh, for the uh, award. And I'll just briefly touch on something that Lee mentioned, um, talked about the importance of voting and us getting out there. I mean, that's a, a core value of social work. I would also just hope that as social workers and as leaders that we are not fearful. In fact, that we are the opposite and feel very proud and standing tall to say that black lives matter. Thank you. Thank you, Dante. The Alumni Association is proud to present the next Professional Achievement Award to John P. Zimmerman, Jr., MSSA 1974. John joined, joined United Way in Cleveland as a graduate school placement. He de dedicated 30 plus years of service to several communities as a United Way professional. Highlights of his United Way career include the development of a shared community services building in Janesville, being a champion for affordable housing in Midland, leading the strategy for the development of a statewide 211 information and referral system, and development of an upgraded domestic violence shelter in Midland. Under his leadership, Midland was the second highest per capita fundraising United Way in the country. John's career honors the Mandel School slogan, Change Agent. John is now also inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, John. John, please hold up your award and say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Hatton, and thanks to the Mandel School Alumni Association for this award. My congratulations to all the additional award winners, particularly those still engaged in social work practice. My award is a Career Achievement Award I can commend to Cleve the benefits of retirement, particularly when you can take satisfaction that your work will have a lasting impact on the communities where you have lived and worked. I'd like to thank my colleague, Christine Robert, president of the Lakeshore United Way in Muskegon, Michigan, for nominating me. And I have to thank the United Way in Cleveland United Torch Services at the time, 1973, for my second year placement that led to a very rewarding and satisfying career as a United Way professional. I share this award with my wife, Pat. She was the 1982 United Way campaign chair in Peoria, Illinois. A year later, she left her hometown to marry me and follow my United Way career to Janesville, Wisconsin, and then to Midland, Michigan. Her personal support has been essential to my success. And as a vice president and trust officer at the leading bank in town, her professional achievements were a wonderful complement to my role in the community. 
Intending no slight to the fine faculty at MSAS, perhaps the most intellectually rewarding part of my two years in graduate school was living with my grandmother, Esther Robbins, in Cleveland Heights. She was a remarkable, intelligent woman and a great influence on my life. My opportunity to live with her for two years extended the time she could stay in her own home. And I was certainly the best fit graduate student of all time. Throughout my United Way career, I have always identified as a social worker, not a fundraiser. Thanks again to the Mandel School for teaching foundational social work values. Keep up the good work and I have voted in Michigan. Thank you, John. The Alumni Association is proud to name Dr. Howard Fuller, MSSA 1964, as the 2020 Distinguished Alumnus, the highest alumni honor given by the Alumni Association. Dr. Fuller's career includes many years in both public service positions and the field of education. Dr. Fuller was a distinguished professor of education and founder director of the Institute for the Transformation of Learning at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He recently retired from Marquette on June 30th. His prior positions include superintendent of Milwaukee Public Schools, director of the Milwaukee County Department of Health and Human Services, and dean of general education at the Milwaukee Area Technical College. He has received numerous awards and recognition over the years, including four honorary doctoral degrees. His memoir, No Struggle, No Progress, was published in 2014. He is now also inducted into the Mandel School Hall of Achievement. Congratulations, Dr. Fuller. Dr. Fuller, please hold up your award and say a few words. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, I don't. I don't have the award, but if I had it, I would hold it up. <laughs> I don't have it. So, uh, but I, I just want to start off by thanking whoever nominated me. Uh, and also obviously to say it was a great honor and a privilege for me to go to SAS. And I got a great deal out of my uh, time that I spent there. It's particularly an honor to be able to be recognized when Steve is being recognized because Steve was one year ahead of me and he was the head of student government and then I replaced him. And so we've been friends over the years and so it really is a great honor. I have to be truthful though and say, although it is a great honor, it's very hard to be in any kind of celebratory mood at this moment in time in this country. Over 213,000 Americans have died from a virus and thousands of those people have died because of the callousness the indifference and the incompetence of the leadership of the national government of this country. It is hard to be celebratory when I know that racial violence continues against my people. It's hard to be celebratory when in my head, in my soul, in my mind, in my heart is Alvin Cole and Ahmaud Aubrey, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Tamir Rice. So that although I'm pleased to receive this award, I'm receiving this award at a time when racial injustice continues to run rampant in this country, when state violence against black people continues to run rampant. It's hard to be celebratory when we know that people are living in poverty in the richest country in the world. So again, it is an honor to receive this award, but I want to go a little bit further than Dante or even Lee went. I do agree that this election is about the soul of America, but this election is also about whether or not we actually believe in democracy. This election is also about, do we actually believe in humanity? Because we have a person who is in the leadership of this country who does not respect the humanity of black people brown people, because anybody who would be the head of a government that would put children in cages at the border of this country, this is shameful. And as social workers and as citizens, we cannot have any kind of meeting and not speak to the atrocities that are currently going on in this country. So again, thank you so much for this award. I've already voted. 
and I'm urging everybody on this call to vote. And we need to vote with the understanding that it is true that the soul of this country is at stake. Democracy is at stake, but humanity is at stake. And my hope is that America will decide that humanity is important in this next election. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all so much and congratulations again to all of our Alumni Association Award winners. I decided to move inside because it got a little cold outside. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Haddon, uh, for the wonderful presentation to our award recipients. Um, hearing about your lifetime of achievement is inspiring. Hearing your words moves me. Uh, Dr. Fuller, uh, you, you've enunciated the feelings that we have in our hearts, and I thank you for bringing that message this evening. Um, my guess is a lot of us have voted, I voted, uh, but we need to do much more and we need to speak out against the injustice. So thank you for that message this evening. Um, I'm happy to tell you that uh, Sharon Brown has, has been able to join us this evening. Uh, uh, Sharon Jordan, excuse me, yeah, Sharon Brown. I, I've, um, Sharon, I've already mentioned that you are receiving the African American Alumni Association's President's Award and the fact that We've known each other for a long time. And so I'm very excited that you're not only here, but that you are receiving this great recognition. Uh, do you have a few words to say, Sharon? I'm not sure if I'm here. Oh, I, I, I hear you. I'm trying to start the video. My apologies. Yes, I am here. Are. <laughs> Hi, Thank Sharon. You. Thank you. It is an honor to be um, included in such um, an accomplished list of other alumni. And yes, Cleve, welcome to retirement soon for you. Um, I worked at the university for 45 years and retired last July and moved down to Florida and I've been back and forth. So I'm assuming an award is out there somewhere, but I guess it can't keep up with me. Um, I would also just like to say, as I was looking at the slideshow, I could recall where the Beaumont School was originally, the Beaumont Building. I remember uh, Ruby Purnell and um, um, Darlene Bailey and other um, illustrious faculty over at the Mandel School. My career, um, again, spanned 45 years at Case Western Reserve, and my focus was primarily fundraising and alumni relations. So in that capacity, I was able to raise millions of dollars for the university and support scholarships, um, especially those for African-American students. I would also just like to say um, the one line that I can recall from my strategic planning class with Dr. Yankee, trust the process. And I'm sure other Mandel alumni are shaking their heads. Yes, trust the process. And that helped me when we were forming the African-American Alumni Association a few years ago. You know, when you're trying to um, bring a group of um, alumni together, yes, trust the process. And so I pretty much carried that through life as well. There have been ups and downs, especially post-retirement. I trust the process. So to each and every one of you who are also receiving awards and um, being inducted into the Hall of Achievement, congratulations. To Cleve, congratulations in advance on your upcoming retirement. Thank you. Good night. Thank, thank you, Sharon. Uh, and the phrase trust the process is something is a phrase I was introduced to early on in my years when I joined the Mandel School. So I guess we all owe it to John Yankee. Uh, I want to give a special thanks tonight as we wrap up our, our ceremony tonight to our reunion committee, to the class agents, to our faculty, staff, and students who have helped make this tonight, celebration tonight uh, a success. Uh, and as Dr. Fuller said, it's, we have to be always mindful of what is happening in our country. And I know each of us knows what our responsibility is in, in working to bring out change. And so while we, we honor uh, the people tonight for their great work, we know the work that still needs to be done. 
Our award ceremony is concluding, and I invite you to continue to homecoming weekend festivities. For your reunions, please remember to click the link in your confirmation emails. We, give, we have a sample on the page in front of you now uh, that's showing you the links that you could go to in your email uh, for the events that you're going to go to this evening. And also there are three events on Saturday that are gonna be exceptional. I encourage you to participate in them. The panel discussion on racism and social justice at 10 a.m. is the first.